Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. And Tonight, I'm going to be talking about Malaysia Booker. I know I am very late to report this. I was trying to do a thorough investigation and try to figure out exactly what happened because there was so many conflicting stories and so many things that, you know, when I try to cover a story, I try to get as accurate as information as possible. Within me trying to cover this story and bring you guys the most accurate story possible, um, I ended up getting busy and in the midst of me researching certain things with this story, I was trying to prioritize like the trending news and then trying to research this and then trying to you know, and then I got busy and then, hey, here we are now today. Um, I did a full video on Malaysia Booker and I did a full video on it last week and I was going to release it. I had talked to one of the people who is very close to her and wanted to give me some insight on what was going on. But within me doing that video, there had been a lot more information that came out and I didn't want to put out incorrect information, so I held off on that video. And now I'm just going to do a whole new video and talk to you guys a little bit about what has transpired. So Malaysia Booker is a transgender woman from Texas, and there has a lot been... There has. <laughs> there has been a lot going on with this situation. Um, Malaysia had went viral in April. And when Malaysia went viral, she went viral from a fight that she had at an apartment complex that she was living in. And it was very toxic over there. There was a lot going on. Right, right when this happened, I believe it went viral on the 12th. One of her friends reached out to me personally on the 13th of April and wanted me to cover this story. So last month, um, you know, she reached out to me and I, I'm like, all right, you know, trying to figure out what information, what the information was, what the story was. And this was way before, you know, now today where Malaysia is resting in peace. This was at the beginning of it. So she reached out to me on April 13th and she said, hey, well, not hey. She said, can you cover my friend's story? It looks bad on her part in the video, but she was only trying to fight out of respect. She's transgender, but I love your view on it. So in that, she included this video. The video is, you know, it's a very graphic video and a very graphic fight. When we post fights on our channel, we post things that are very graphic. It goes as a hit to us to post. So, you know, certain things like we try to like stray away from posting. But if there is a bigger message to be sent, then, you know, sometimes we'll go against the grain and we'll post it anyways. So if this was something that, you know, it's like, OK, you know, this is a serious hate crime. This is something really going on, you know, and I really need to put the video out anyways. I want to get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on. Also sent me um, some info where she says they put her in a car, um, was mad at her other tranny for not helping, and they started fighting. Those apartments are bad and hateful. You can't be gay over there. They will beat you. And again, this was all on April 13th that she sent these things to me um, to let me know what was going on. So I was telling her on April 15th, I responded and I said, hey, you know, there are attachments in here that says unavailable. What are those? Again, trying to get a clear and concise picture on what was going on. So she was telling me that she was going to get the video to me. And then um, I was like, I can see the fight, but I can't see the additional attachments. So then she left me a video, I mean, an audio message to kind of further explain what was going on. And this is what she said. Um, those were, um, it was a video, the dude took it out. It was a video, uh, the part where the news showed from, the, from a surveillance camera of the wreck where he was jammed in, he was punk this, punk that, I kill you. He was threatening to shoot him. Like, they forced him to fight. Like, he forced him out from that call because he had somebody go get his gun. And they brought him the gun. And he kept saying, I'll shoot you right now. I'll shoot you right now. And they kept saying, don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. You're going to shoot him. And I find out these people. So, that's the part I was showing you from the fight. And this is like, 
the second time where he done been jumped on by people that's that's um that don't like transgender. Like his name is Pierre Booker. He's named after his daddy. But his he goes by Malaysia. Um he, he has a Pierre Booker page as well. But like he just got jumped on and cut not too long ago from a man going crazy behind him. You know, he was trying to leave from to being attacked like this. Like that really hurt me to see my friend like that. Like I <laughs> I'm sorry, but that hurt me. And I was like, I I watch you all the time. I was like, oh, I need her to cover this because it's sad. Like, and it's all they do over there is jump gay people. Okay. And again, she sent me this on, um, I don't know if the date shows when I, uh, oh, it just, so it, it goes off of the screen. But it, it, she sent me this on April 15th, all of this information. And this was before the incident where Malaysia has now lost her life and is now resting in peace. I'm, I'm trying to gather as much information as I can if I'm going to cover this story. And so she then tr tr sent me more information saying that there was a person who was flagging people's videos who tried to show the video of the fight. And then so she said he's trying to own something that's not his. The guy went live. I'm going to send you his Facebook. And then I said, I, re I replied and I responded and I said, oh, so that means anyone who posted, he will try and flag the video. And then she was saying it's not his video. Um, it was a live. He trying to take over, but they wilding. And then she said the gay community went over there and shot up the apartments and after the boy who live it is. And I said, whoa, so they out there thugging. So I took that as, okay, they are doing a lot with this story. Um, they're trying to flag anybody who posts it. And at the time, it's like, I don't want to put my channel in jeopardy from posting a video that is going to get flagged and put a strike against my channel because that negatively affects us. And without the video, there wasn't much to explain to you guys at that point in time about what was going on. But now there has been a lot more that has gone on. And now, unfortunately, she has lost her life. And, you know, it's a very sad situation. So this woman, she kept writing me um, and she kept telling me, you know, certain information. She said that, you know, at those apartments, like they beat you if you're gay, they beat you if you're trans. It's very toxic over there. And then she also told me that, you know, that there was a GoFundMe involved, that they had put like a GoFundMe together for her because she was a victim in this whole viral assault and things like that. And I'm like, you know, that's good. She has she has compensation. After that, after she told me that people were flagging it and she told me like, you know, that she had a GoFundMe, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't really need to post the story because she has a GoFundMe, the feds are involved. They're getting involved. I don't have to risk my channel by posting something that's gonna get a strike on it. And I'm like, everything is all good. I'm not thinking that people are gonna further try to attack this woman when police are involved, this, this open case, it's a viral situation. So if anything happens to her, I'm like, all, all roads are gonna lead to the guy who you know, attacked her. And that would be stupid of anybody to do anything further after the feds, the police, all of these entities are involved. So I thought that it was going to be in a good place. Like she was going to, you know, go on to be happily ever after. And hopefully with the GoFundMe money, she would have been able to relocate her situation, move out of that area, you know, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Um, a month later, Malaysia Booker got into another incident and at this first incident that went viral, it was due to a car accident situation. So there was this car accident situation that happened, and that's kind of what prompted all of this to go in motion. Well, fast forward to a month after that, where she ultimately lost her life, it was alleged to have been another incident involving a car accident type of thing when she passed away her friend reached out to me again and told me that she passed away and i'm like you know what i'm gonna cover this story 
And when I tried to cover the story, I tried to research as much as possible, but there was so much that people were saying. One person says she lost her life because there was another car accident situation that happened. I guess the person tried to demand for her to pay money on the spot and get money. Then it was a totally different story that she was ambushed and then people were trying to set her up and trying to steal the GoFundMe money. And then it was a whole nother story as to like, I guess she was allegedly like prostituting that night and it was some chaos that happened and some melee went down it was so many different stories around what happened as to how she actually lost her life to where when i was trying to you know give you guys a clear and concise video it was just too many stories it was all over the place and i was like you know what let me put this story to to the side let me kind of you know work on some other things until i get more concrete information and I haven't been able to uncover exactly the who, what, when, the why, the how, the what for sure. So since I was not able to find like a clear understanding of exactly what happened, I'm gonna read to you guys the CNN report on what they have. And then I'm gonna share with you guys the phone call that her friend shared with me where I was trying to get to the bottom of it and find out what exactly was going on. And from that, her friend didn't even know as much information that I thought she would know or, or more background insight. But I'm going to share it with you guys anyways and bring you guys up to speed. And again, I know that this story is late, but hey, it is what it is. I'm getting out to you now. A transgender woman who was attacked in April found dead on Dallas streets. And they have a video a little bit like of a little bit of it. And it was like a very, very traumatic video. Um, she was previously assaulted in April and found dead in Dallas. She also found a complainant lying face down in the street, deceased from homicidal violence. She made headlines after the April assault went viral. I can stand before you, whereas in other scenarios, we are at a memorial. This is the man who um, had the attack the last time. And it says they believe that no evidence to believe the assault in April was connected to her murder. Offense, and we are encouraging the public to come forward with information to bring closure to both of these offenses. Okay. And so on here it says. A transgender woman whose brutal assault in April was captured on video has been found dead on a Dallas street, police said. Police responded to a report of a shooting and then they give the address of where it was alleged to happen around 6.40 a.m. Saturday. And again, this was like a couple weeks ago, but I'm bringing it to you guys now. Um, and uh, it says, upon arrival, officers found the complaint lying face down in the street, deceased from homicidal violence, Weddington said during a news conference on Sunday, the woman was not carrying identification, but the medical examiner positively identified her as Malaysia Booker on Sunday afternoon, he told reporters. In a separate incident last month, Booker 22 was assaulted by several men in the parking lot of a Dallas apartment complex after what police said was a minor traffic accident. Video from the incident showed the suspects repeatedly punched and kicked Booker while she was on the ground. During the assault, the suspects were reported to have used homophobic slurs and police trying to determine if it was a hate crime. I am extremely angry about what happens to the mob violence against this woman, Dallas Mayor Mike Rollins said at the time. Those who did this uh, do not represent how Dallas sites feel about our thriving LGBTQ community. We will not stand for this kind of behavior. One man, Edward Thomas, was arrested and faced his charges over the April 12th assault, but Weddington said Thomas had not been linked to Booker's death. There is nothing at the time to connect Mr. Edward Thomas and the offense that occurred yesterday. He said police are unaware of Thomas' current whereabouts. Police are still trying to identify others who participated in the April attack. Weddington said, Weddington encouraged members of the public with information on either case to come forward with information to bring closure to both of these offenses. Booker spoke out in the days after the attack and to thank the community for supporting her. Um, and then it gave a clip of what she said for the people who came out and supported her 
at that time. So this has been something that has definitely turned tragic and very, very tragic within a month's time. Um, immediately after her death, like the same day that she died, her friend reached out to me and told me that she passed because she had been communicating with me since April. And she told me that she passed and she wanted to, um, you know, like, you know, let me know and inform me on it. And I wanted to get her take on it. So I allowed her to call me and call in and tell me the information that she had on this situation. But when I talked to her, she kind of gave me information, but it wasn't very like solid information as to exactly what happened because she kind of didn't know either. Um, she just kind of was speculating also. And with speculation, I kind of want to try to bring facts along with it. And I, again, I wasn't able to get to the root and get down to the facts. So I'm just going to play for you guys what her friend said in the phone conversation. And you guys let me know what you guys think about this story down below. So welcome. Okay. Okay. So, so what, what happened? I'm my lady's bookers friend, and I just started back in April when she had the head crime done on her. She was in some apartment in Oak Cliff in Dallas. You can see um, several videos where you see her driving out the out the apartment, and you see a car behind her ramming her. Well, it started from a little a fender vendor i guess um but there was no damages to car but because it was a transgender woman he felt some type of way and everybody know over there in those apartments they rough they're very rough over there mm -hmm. and if you don't stay there you don't fit if you transgender you don't fit if you're a gay male not female you don't fit. So mm -hmm. that really has the issues with her. So you see the car ram her and made her swerve and took the car like she was black. And in the other video you'll hear, all he said is saggy this, punk this. It wasn't even about the car. It was what you got. You gonna give me something and go get my gun. Go get my gun. I'm gonna shoot this thing. And mm -hmm. everybody, no, nah, you can't do this. And it was like, it wasn't nothing wrong with your car. The damage came from ram in the car. He actually had more damages then. That's when he stole whatever he could see at her car. Stole her phone. But he was so in tune on um, being seen. Mm -hmm. It was more of a, I'm being seen thing than anything. Because it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. And Malay just always hung over there, and he was, I'm tired of your faggot ass being over there anyway. Well, I'm tired of your faggot ass, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was already an issue with her being over there in those apartments. Right. She had other girls with her. She had two other transgender women with her. So he was so consistent on somebody going to get his gun to the point where somebody actually did then you'll see Malaysia walking out, trying to anyway, but she was forced. It was like she couldn't do too much because she was forced. This man has a gun, and all you hear is, I'm about to shoot this punk. I'm about to shoot this punk. And they're like, nah, nah, don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. It was, don't shoot him. Don't shoot him. Mm -hmm. So by the time they don't force her back into the apartment, you know, Everybody knows Malaysia has a map. Yeah. Do you think Malaysia this has something is, to do with um, the previous incident that went viral? Because when you wrote me on April 13th. This, this is about the fight. This is what led to the fight itself. And it was because of all this one man and these group of apartments. It was planned. So he, he kept hearing um, somebody with this day, I'm giving $200. Uh-huh. Are you talking about the first incident or the incident which yeah, led to her losing? This is the first incident. This is the first when they did the hate crime. Okay. And it was like, she was like, I'm not supposed to give it. She said, do nothing but stand her ground. Regardless, she was just like, come on, whoever's going to fight me, fight me. But mm -hmm. the fight turned to a whole jump. And like, 
she was getting hit from left to right and her friends, that was females. They was trying to pull them back and, you know, trying to help. But that was a woman. The two transgender women that was with us, they got hit. Mm -hmm. So it was like, this is a group of apartments. They already scared or whatever because they have guns. Right. So they don't, she don't got knocked out and they were still kicking her. The women was trying to protect her and so it was like, they thought it was funny. It was funny to them. They already knew it. They were like, oh, we're not going to jump. We're not going to jump. And they, you kept her and don't jump, don't jump. Like, oh, we're not going to jump. We're not going to jump the target. But they did it. Right. Okay. And so. She was unconscious. And so now today, She's gone. Right. So, because she's, she's gone. Right. Like a month from now, she's felt shot in the head in her underclothes. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's crazy. It's like this dude got out of jail, and then she shot in the head, and they say it was a friend. She supposed to be set up by a friend with somebody else, and we not getting it because it's like. It's on my sister was just live. She just wrote on Facebook and she just gone. And it's like, I don't know why she's been fighting to be her. Mm -hmm. she, she just wrote to be her. Like, she just got smashed in the face before they jumped it by a man. You know, it's like, it's always been something. Right. With her fighting to be transgender. And it don't make no sense. They can't be them. She's sweet. Right. Okay. So, can you explain to me the environment of the apartments that this all happened? Because when you wrote to me originally, and um, like right after the first viral incident, and you were like, "Hey, can you cover this story?" You were telling mm -hmm. me you said that like you can't be gay over there, like they'll beat you yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. So, explain aside from you know her, because you said like the apartments yeah, were hateful. Like, yeah, just explain that. Rules and regulations. The apartments, the police know about these apartments. They bad. They are they real bad. And it's like, I don't understand why they don't be looking about them. Because they know how they are. They, all they do is jump on you. They meet the women over there. Like, you can't be from outside of what they know. Or they're just going to beat you rob you. Mm -hmm. All the bad drugs and stuff that they be having around, these people passing out, it comes from over there. Okay. Like they do everything over there, and they they not trying to do anything about it. Like you can see in the video, you see the police was even like the paramedics were scared to even go into the apartment. That's how bad they are. Mm -hmm. So the neighborhood is a really bad neighborhood that is not accepting of LGBT, and if you are anything out of that norm then it's a problem for you being there is what you're saying and it's just yeah, really it rough is. okay it, it's not i won't say it's the community it, it's just it's not the outside it's not the surrounding it's just those apartments those people in those apartments okay you can't step up in there or you might not step out okay and so explain to me because like you said, there was people who thought that she was set up. Do you think that the first person that she had the viral incident with has anything to do with this new incident? Like, is there any friendship relation or is there any, you know, anything she like that? She didn't know him. She didn't know him. Um, he was just, I guess he's supposed to be like the tough guy of the party. And so they kept saying he known for knocking people out. So he stepped up to take the two hundred dollars because he wants to knock her out. And and for how many times she been over there, yeah, she wasn't able to type who had closed um download me. Mm hmm But she's pretty. Like if you look at her picture, she's pretty. She looks just like a woman. Even though she will let you know she is not one. But she's pretty. Mm -hmm. And they are attracted to her. And it was just, it just seemed like it was more than what it was. You talking about the first you know, viral incident? Yeah, it just seemed like he was just so, you know how some men try to make them feel like they just hate being around gay people, gay men. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it's due to extra, but that extra being to him, uh-huh. the type of vibe he was giving out. And he was just doing too much. Mm-hmm. It was like other people were coming forward. It was like, well, he didn't want to fight us when we were trying to fight. But why would he jump on her like this when he was back and had this fight? Okay. And it was just more. And so from that incident to the incident now, has um, Malaysia consistently gotten into other, with other people? Was it the same person? Is it the same group of people? Uh, like, um, she would get on Facebook and have her story time. And she would, you know, she's feisty. She, she would put like little stuff on there. She would entertain the girls. And it was either big this or yahoo, you know. And she would just come off. I mean, you just have to know her because she wasn't serious, but she did have people to where where they did hate on her because she came a long way in the looks area uh-huh. and the body, and she got you know more known. But she did have other girls hating on her, and they would say little stuff, and she would you know speak on it. Right, right. Or uh, she would do her story come and tell you know different scenarios and situations that she had been in before. So when she put certain stuff up, it's like people that don't know her uh, never probably watched her. They had to probably go back and watch old lives. And they said, oh, she was always in mess. She actually went always in mess. It's just sitting that way because she comes out aggressive. But she's sweet. It's like you have to know her story to know why she was a little rough. Mm-hmm. But whatever, but you know, she was up front. Like she right. was up front about the stuff she doing, the stuff she do, you know, in her life, in her personal. But it's like, it's, right. I get it's, that. I don't mean to cut you off. Judging her. Right, right. No, I don't mean to cut you off. What I'm saying is, what like is there any correlation from the first incident to this incident? I understand that you she know, put that, certain um, things on Facebook. Know. Uh, they haven't said they were saying they haven't got anything yet to say that it was you know tied together so they were saying they don't know his whereabouts at that moment they was like they don't know his whereabouts they didn't have no information on him so they don't know who actually did it they don't know they don't don't know so there's at this point they trying to narrow down who he was with and they found her phone by GPS in it because they was opening up, whoever had was opening up um, her DMs mm. at first before it was just put out there and it was just spread it like it is now. They was opening up her DMs. Okay. And so the person who had it, so they don't know who the person is as of yet. They're still trying to locate who it is. And there is, it, and it isn't known yet if the incident that happened, the viral incident, is correlated to this new incident. So what I want to know from you, since you have inside information, aside from her story times and saying, you know, hey, these messy hoes, blah, 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 blah. Did she continuously get into it with that group of like the the men who jumped her? Did she continuously no, she get into it with them? She would she wouldn't even speak on it. She she would say like people would bring it up and she'd be like, I'm leaving it alone. I'm not speaking on it. She's like, I don't want no no drama. She's like, I'm not fighting nobody. I'm calling the police. She's like, I don't want nothing. Okay, so, so she didn't like, get she, she didn't get it. into it with them again. So, okay. So that situation happened. It went viral. And, you know, after that, then whenever she talked about anything else, it was just, you know, just, oh, he's messy. You know, not, not nothing yeah, it was deep. Just, you know, and then. She, cause she would not speak on that incident. She wouldn't even get on live until she showed how she showed herself maybe once or twice. Um, but she didn't leave it up. How she was looking, but she wouldn't just be public because she was looking like herself. So she was really hurt. She was really beat up. No, I understand that. But you know, even if I'm hurt, if I'm beat up, 
if I live in the same apartments, if I cross the person that I got into it with, like, you know, sometimes there'll be words exchanged. There'll be, there's other things that happen kind of in the meantime. Well, if we left it alone, what happened was the community itself, because she impacted a lot of people. So at this point, it was like the community, the, the gay community was taking a stand to get justice for her. They actually went back over there and um, they had a whole argument and a shootout. So, you know, it was just unnecessary stuff. People got shot. Um, no one got killed, but people did get hurt. There was, was there was a shootout. There was a shootout. There was a shootout when? Um, after the first incident. Okay. When got beat on. Okay, so after the first incident, how long apart was the shootout? And did the so shootout have... The next day. Okay, so the next day, there was a shootout in the apartments. And who was the shootout with? And who were... Like, what it was, was it? Other, it was just other, you know, gay men um, that got together. So the gay yeah, man did a shootout? Like, yeah, it just, you know, some people felt like, you know, the, the gay community, some of them got together and they wanted justice for her. You okay. Know, they, felt, they felt like... So they you know, retaliated. Okay, and yeah. so after they retaliated, the gay community came forward, they retaliated. Because I'm trying to see if like if this is just something out the blue or if this is something related so after we don't know okay it's like it was all over, it's all over the place right it's, it's, it's like she had other trans that did like her transformation you know um so she had a lot of enemies from a lot of different people is what you're saying yeah. It's hard to pinpoint because she had a lot of enemies, whether it be females or males. Yeah. She had uh -huh. enemies. Okay. So, um, were you there at the scene of the viral incident and how is it that you guys came to be Hello. friends? I'm, uh, I was on the live. Me and the ladies became friends um, from a group we was in. I found out about the incident and I was like, oh, okay, this is like um, before the Malaysia now. She always been outspoken and fun and bubbly. And it's like, you know, we would talk on um, personal stuff. I, that's how we started outside of Facebook. She would tell me her story. Okay. She was living with her grandmother. You know, and it was, it was the, it started like high school, well, middle school really. So we would just talk all the time. I would always give her uplifting stuff. I always inbox her. When I think she was going down, I would either call her or whatever to check on her. But other than that, we met up at the malls and stuff. But that was it, really. Um, oh, okay. But she was always out of town. Now she did get what, you know, she started getting bookings out of town and stuff because she was doing shows and she had one coming up on the 26th that she won't be attending okay and so what is it that what message do you want to send on your friend's behalf or what is it that you want to like make clear in this like what is it that you want to officially say in regards to this situation I mean my thing is I get that people don't understand the transgender um, lifestyle. But at the end of the day, you can't make these, you can't make nobody live their lifestyle how you think they should live it. They should have to fight to be them. You know, mm -hmm. no matter if it's a trans woman or man, they still people, they still somebody's family. And really, it's a gay in everybody's family. So you don't want, I mean, you don't want nobody just going to take your gay family member. You don't feel the same way like her family. Anybody mm -hmm. else's family. Right, so right. Like, just mind your business and live your own personal. And this is just, it's too much violence. And then it's like, 
with other trans women in Dallas at this point are being killed. That's because. Mm-hmm. And it's not right. Right, right. If yeah, I decide it's not. I want to be a man tomorrow, that's my business. If I'm not hurting nobody, leave me alone. Let me live my life. Just like she's living her life. Just like anybody living their life. That's their life to live. Mm-hmm. I agree. And so basically your message is just stop judging people just because they don't live the same lifestyle that you live. Yeah. And allow mm-hmm. people to live their lives. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, thanks for talking to me in regards to this. Okay, so that is the phone conversation I had with Malaysia Booker's friend. When she first initially called, I thought she was going to be telling me about the incident that had just happened when she had lost her life. And I thought that I w- it was info relating to that. But then she was talking about the first viral incident. And then I was trying to figure out, you know, if there was any relation to it. And then I was trying to figure out, okay, what actually happened to Malaysia, but she she didn't really have that much info on what happened the night Malaysia lost her life. And that was what I was trying to figure out. And so after that, that's when I tried to do more research on it to try to find out what actually happened to her. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm sorry um, that it's late, but sometimes us as YouTubers, we work on stories and it's sometimes it's like, okay, let me get the story out the fastest. But when there are stories that are complex and they have a lot of layers, it takes us time to do research, to look up things, to find out information. Um, You know, and this is one of those things where I tried to find information. It was conflicting stories. It was one person said this, another person said this, this person said that. And it was like a circle of stuff where I really, at the end of the day, I really don't know. So I'm just, you know, I just going to give you guys what I have and call it a day. Um, But you guys, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Her friend reached out to me after we did the phone conversation and wanted me to make it clear because there was a lot of people wondering what happened with the GoFundMe money. A lot of people also thought that she was set up for the. It was just a lot of stories. I'm telling y'all, it just was a lot of stories. And her friend reached out to me again and said that The GoFundMe money, according to the friend, she said that the money was refunded. I guess there was somebody who set up the GoFundMe for her and the she requested that the money be refunded back to the people. And according to the friend, the people who donated got the money back. So she didn't even have the GoFundMe money. I don't know. It's a lot. This story has a lot going on. Um, And again, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down below. All right, guys.